This video is about the Surfside condo collapse. You also might know it as the Miami building collapse. This is a really, really unfortunate event where 98 people lost their lives, and this video goes out to them and their families. My name is Tyler Lay. I love concrete, like deeply love concrete, but sometimes it goes wrong, and I talk about that as well. Please like, subscribe, leave me a comment below. I uh, hope you'll like this video and watch my other ones I have at the end. So what happened? Could it have been avoided? How can we stop this from happening again? These are all questions that I know that are running around in your mind that we're going to talk about today. But a big, big thanks to Matt Fadden and, and Gary Klein. Um, they did this great work at a company called WJE, who's hired actually a number of my former students. They did an awesome, awesome job. And I will link to their YouTube video and some of their other reports in my notes below. Now, Surfside, Florida is in Miami. It's right on the beach, beautiful, picturesque. And this is the Champlain Tower South. It is a 12-story structure that um, was in service for 40 years before it collapsed. Yeah, this is what it looked like on the aftermath. Pretty, pretty horrible event where half the structure was lost. And here is another view again from the ocean. Ugh. So why does the building collapse after being in service for 40 years? On um, June 24th, 2021, at a 1.10 a.m., the parking deck collapsed, and then that damaged some columns in the building, and then the building itself collapsed about 1.22 a.m. So why did the pool deck collapse? There was additional weight added over time. What am I talking about? Well, if this is the original concrete slab, what they did was they actually added a topping slab to help with drainage and then they added some tile on top of that now the topping slab and the tile was not part of the original design and all of that weight was added to the existing structure now how do we know all this well because we have cores from those actual systems and you can see the topping slab and the mortar they can measure them and yeah they weren't there originally now, also, there's these planters that I ha have highlighted here. They were all added and were not part of the original plan set or design or calculations. And these are pretty large, hefty items. Yep, you can see some of them then there. And there was this caused significant deflection or a warning. Something really horrible is happening right where I have circled. Here's what it looks like in 2020. But by 2021, there was cracking, there was deflection, there was sagging. And here's what it looks like by 2022, right somewhat before the whole structure collapsed. So what is happening? The Surfside used a flat plate slab, two-way slab system. That means there's no beams. That means they're just column and a slab. So I'm showing the cartoon here where I've got a column and a slab. And what happens is as you load these things, you can sometimes get something called punching shear. This is where the column punches or pushes right through the slab itself. Well, what you start to see at first are some cracks, and then those cracks open up. And if we zoomed in here, what's the only thing holding it together is the rebar. Now, if that rebar breaks, then that slab will punch through and then the collapse will happen. Unfortunately, the rebar was incorrectly placed during construction. I'm showing a tape measure here with where the rebar is. This is a physically cut portion of the slab and that is where the rebar should have been. The original design and inspection did not address punching shear, didn't even look at it. This means they didn't have the right amount of rebar at the columns and they didn't realize it until things were too late. There was no subsequent repairs were done to fix any of these things and the punching shear is gonna cause significant deflections. Yeah, that's what caused this horrible looking cracking. As the first column starts to fail, the loads will distribute to the other columns in the structure. This is, a, 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 this is called structural resiliency, and all the columns in the pool deck will eventually reach their limit, and then it will collapse, and that's what happened at about 1.10 a.m. Now, then I talked about this column that was being damaged. To explain that, I'm going to show you a cartoon here where I've got the building column on the right and the pool slab or deck on the left, and that is the joint. That's a very important thing where these two things come together. Once the pool deck started to collapse, started to fail, it caused damage in the joint, and then it was gone. It took a big bite out of it. Now, how do we know this? Because we 
literally have parts of the column that we can look at and see. And um, this is very, very, very problematic because as the load keeps coming down there, it has a much, much smaller area, so the stresses get much higher. There might have been some wind, we're not so sure, and then the building collapsed, and that's what happened at 1.22 a.m. So this should not happen. It shouldn't, should not happen. There should be way more rebar at the joints to stop this type of behavior from happening. And the original design made the column very, very hard to construct. They put a lot of steel in one location and they just weren't able to build it. And the reinforcement um, was out of place in that final structure. And that's what allowed that large bite to happen. So why did we only, why did only part of the building collapse? Well, what I'm talking about is, do you see this big circled area? Well, part of the building collapsed, but part of it didn't. And that circled area is something called a shear wall. And that shear wall saved that other part of the building from falling down. A shear wall is a massive wall that is part of a structure. And what it's designed for is like hurricane winds. Ah, I know. So they had one there and that was pretty awesome. But could all of this collapse have been avoided? Well, definitely yes. I mean, a resounding yes. What lessons can we learn from this? Well, in the design of the structure itself, there was inadequate punching shear design from the very beginning of the structure. And there was poor construction details as well made by the designers, and that caused us to have construction issues because our rebar was not correctly placed in the slab or the columns. An additional weight was added. That is the planters, that is the tile, that is the topping slab added to the structure, and there was inadequate building inspection. Now they inspected it, but there's things that they missed, big things that they missed. And the large deflections were occurring, they were warning people there was something really, really wrong, but they didn't fix it, they didn't warn people. And this is called ductility. We want our structures to bend and give a lot. Bend but don't break is our reinforced concrete motto. But if you load it enough and you leave it there enough and you don't fix what's important, it will break. But what is the my biggest takeaway from all of this? Well, our structures change over time. We change how we load them. They deteriorate. We do other things to them that we didn't even expect to. And inspection and maintenance of these structures are critical and are going to continue to be critical in our future. And we need to require special training or certification for our inspectors. And I know if you say they already had them, we need to up the game and make it better. These inspections should also be peer reviewed. Some very, very large, important structures have to be checked by someone else. Some of these inspections need to be checked by others as well. We must take this seriously or this will happen again. In summary, there were a lot of issues with this structure. There were design issues, there were construction issues, there were use issues, there were inspection issues. And if any one of these were a little bit different, a little bit less severe than this collapse would not have happened. Thank you so much for watching. Please make sure you like, subscribe, leave me a comment. Make sure you check me out on Instagram and Facebook at Concrete.Tyler. And of course, a massive, massive thanks to Matt Fadden and Gary Klein again for all the great work that they did and for sharing these slides and some of their wisdom with this. And so make sure you check out some other videos.